in, of it. in his reply, not right now. Mr. Rajiv Chandra. Sir, thank you, sir. I rise to uh, speak in support of this uh, bill, sir. I believe that this bill is uh, a bill that will... Pot When Mr. D. Raja moved the resolution, his time was detected from this. Kindly sit down. Because uh, when he moved the resolution, what he spoke does not come in this time. So the time left for others should be 14 minutes and not 8 minutes. Um, Go on also, let, no problem. I, no problem. I will take, I'll only take thing that is, interview. Member should be there. That's I'll a, take that's that interview. That's the only interview. worry of mine. Otherwise, 14 or 16 minutes also have no problem. Sir, uh, this We are giving bill, you 4-4 four, four minutes. Yes, sir. I'll so take, you can I'll take, six, take okay. 5 minutes. I, Sir, this bill will positively impact insurance consumers of our country in particular and the economy in general, sir. Sir, we are all aware India remains an underinsured country. Insurance penetration is about 3.9%. It's below the world average of 6.3%. We rank 17th out of 62 nations. After almost 70 years of independence, over 800 million Indians remain uninsured. Many more than that remain uninsured in health and assets. This low insurance density, sir, needs to be urgently addressed and this can only be done by rapidly introducing more insurance companies and more investment. <laughs> sir, more players more, means more investment and more competition. And competition, as my colleague Praful, uh, Praful Patelji just said, through many companies is the only sustainable way for Indian consumers to get easy access and affordable insurance. So there is some discussion here about why FDI and not domestic sources is one of the questions that my friend Derek has raised, including some other opponents to the bill. That question, sir, can be asked of almost all sectors that attract FDI today. Why FDI in telecom? Why FDI in infrastructure? Why in services? Why in airlines? Why FDI at all? Sir, the question is really quite simple to answer. While our economy is a growth economy, we have finite resources. And silence, please, please, silence. And those finite resources, sir, have to be used in priority areas where private capital cannot play a role. We need those resources for areas like the social sector, poverty programs of the government, rural infrastructure, etc. If we can raise additional resources from external sources, it is good economics and good politics to do so. Even a country like China, sir, which is the favorite of many of our colleagues here, has in its economic playbook FDI at its core. Now the only country that does not use FDI in its economy, and I don't think my friend Derek has uh, any vision of wanting India to be like that, is North Korea. So we don't clearly want to become North Korea. That is the reason why we want FDI in large amounts in our economy. Let me also touch a bit upon the opposition to FDI from my friends in the left. I respect their views. Many of them are my uh, close friends. I appreciate their ideological opposition to private capital. But what I do not understand is what is their opposition to private foreign capital, given that most private capital in India today is already seeing foreign sources like ECBs and FIIs. And we all know, sir, FDI is a much more sustainable form of capital that creates real assets than FIIs and ECBs. So while I respect their view, sir, I must humbly submit to them it is flawed and it is contrary to what and inc inconsistent with demands of today's consumers for more choice and more competition. Sir, there have been also some concerns raised about foreigners running away with the premiums. Now, I'm sure that the finance minister will explain this, but IRDA and the law prohibits the utilization of premiums by any of these companies, including the joint ventures, ex expressly uh, except for uh, laid down by the IRDA. So there is no question of any foreign company or a joint venture running away with the premiums from the country, sir. So that is again a red herring that I want to just dispel. Sir, the dynamics of a well-insured society are transformational. We must understand and embrace this. High insurance densities have, have huge impacts on societal well-being, health, family standards of living on one end of the spectrum, and on the other end of the spectrum, sir, it creates an economy of high savings rates, improved long-term financial uh, capital, which in turn makes long-term infrastructure financing easier. So, sir, in a nutshell, catalyzing the insurance sector by regulating it well, 
attracting more investment is good for the consumer and good for the economy. Sir, before I end, let me just raise three specific issues that I believe should be brought to the attention of the government and the finance minister. Sir, there is some talk about this issue of Indian control. I just want to bring to his attention that this could be misunderstood. It could be misunderstood as creating two classes of investors. That you are creating a situation where rent seeking by some private companies will continue to be in force. So I would like to see from him a clarification that the Indian company law is what will really prevail in, on the issue of management and control. That there is no contradiction in this bill, sir. So I'll quickly end. Sir, the bill also misses, I believe, sir, a big opportunity to create a reinsurance hub th and thousands of jobs associated with reinsurance industry. With Dubai and Singapore fast emerging reinsurance hubs that are moving insurance markets away from Europe and uh, North America, we could have created a reinsurance hub in India, but this would have required more capital and more FDI limits. Sir, in ending, I would like the government and the finance minister to commit that they will work to making the insurance PSUs even more competitive and strong by re-architecting how they are managed and run. PSU, sir, must be investment assets of the government, not by preserving their monopolies, but by transforming them into market share leaders and world beaters, even as the insurance, sector, insurance market grows. Countries like Singapore have shown how government-linked companies can perform well, and that vision must be unveiled here as well, sir. Sir, let me end by saying the insurance laws amendment bill is pro-competition, pro-consumer, it is pro-independent regulation, it is pro-investment, it is pro-economy, and I fully reiterate my support to the bill, and I hope the House will pass this unanimously, sir.